Hello, everyone, and welcome into the State 48 podcast. I'm your host, Lisa Matthews, bringing you all things AZ. So, of course, we have to bring on the co-founder slash, I don't even know your true title because you do so Creative. many things Creative here. Director. Okay, sorry. You don't have to correct me already. <laughs> but he wears many, many hats here at State 48. So I'm so excited to get into just your background, how you created the logo even, the backstory behind that. But first, you're a pretty fun guy. Aren't you? Yeah. I've learned. I've, I've learned. I like to think I am. A few couple least. weeks here. Um, I have a fun game to start things off here to get to know you better. It's called Finish the Sentence. Okay. Okay. I told you I wasn't going to tell you yeah, what you're yeah, in for. I'm, I'm good. Okay. You can find the best food in AZ at the Churchill. Ooh. Plug. Shameless plug. Plug. <laughs> My favorite sports team in the Valley is? The Arizona Coyotes. Okay, so why? Backstory. Uh, I play hockey. Used to play hockey. Currently Did retired. Oh, um, what but position? Yeah. Uh, wing, defense, okay. what was needed. Honestly, that's kind of similar to the roles here just what's needed gets done <laughs> Where right do you want? um yeah but uh but yeah no me and my brother um grew up playing hockey um our whole family's from detroit so it's a big thing there Whoa. right um but yeah so grew up playing hockey played a lot of roller hockey here and then probably 10 12 years ago um me and seven started playing ice hockey together like in an adult league we did it for many years uh when he moved away i played one more season and then I decided that, uh, you know, I'm done driving. I live in Phoenix, driving yeah. all the way to Gilbert to play okay. um, late nights. Wow. Children have a monopoly on the ice, so you can kind of only get, like, late night hockey in. Mm -hmm. And Sunday nights at 9 o'clock. Not the business. Trying to run a business here, you know. Yeah. Can't, can't be up all night. I did not know that. Were you yeah. a big fighter? Oh, uh, yeah. I get I get it an extensive what? amount of times. It's not that I'm a fighter. It's just more of like the refs are wrong, and I don't agree with them, so I yell at them. And so it's so you more just of get like, in like fighting words. You're not a yeah, fist fighter. I get you that. Uh, talker, if you will. And you know, we can't do that here. And we can say shit. I, mean, oh. I think as the creative director here, I can decide right. that we can or can't say it. Good to know. Now <laughs> moving forward. All right. The best hike in AZ is oh Grand Canyon. Un no, Have you no hiked? question. Yeah. Okay. Uh, I've done North Rim down um, with a group of people. It was a blast. It's so fun. Looking at it from the rim is great, you know, but when you really get into the canyon, it things just kind of totally change. So Perspective changes. You really are very small as a human. Right. And I think that that's a great thing to kind of uh, just know and feel. Did so you do yeah. the falls? The Havasupai falls? I have as done well? Havasupai as well. Yeah. I've done that three times. Oh. Wild stories from that. Um, well, tell me one. Okay. Uh, so the first time I ever did it, I wasn't a big hiker then. Went with um, high school girlfriend and her dad. We stayed in the village, so we didn't camp mm -hmm. out or anything. I didn't really know what I was getting into, if I'm being entirely honest. I had a Jansport backpack, <laughs> cut off jeans, <laughs> high top vans. It's just not what? hiking a tower. Yeah. yeah. Um, uh, second night, the first, the second day, the, it started to rain pretty heavy, um, and we got called up to like, we just went and hung out in the room or whatever. Um, overnight the levee broke. Um, so the whole entire cr campground got flooded. No. Um, a bunch of people lost their stuff, car keys in their packs, all that good stuff. Uh, it ended up getting to a point where we waited around all day and three black Hawk helicopters had to come in on rotation, um, to air back everybody out. So that's pretty trippy. And then it obviously, so this happens like every like 10 years and have a soup, I guess. Oh, um, a good luck charm. Yeah, I guess, right? I don't know. <laughs> um, but uh, but anyway, so one of the falls, there's like three main falls, and then there's mm -hmm. now there's a couple of different ones too, mm -hmm. but that first fall that you hit, um, after that day, completely changed. Like, we were like some of like the last people to ever have seen that fall that way, mm -hmm. and now there's still falls there, you know, but they're just different, you know? It's pretty yeah. crazy. Whoa. Yeah. Okay, and then you went back, hoping that it wouldn't flood again. Back, yeah, uh, <laughs> quite a while later, and that was just... Is just right time, right place for where I needed to be, you know. Um, met some people for the first time down there um, that are still great friends to this day. Um, mm -hmm. You know, that's just that hiking community, though, I feel like is typically when you go hike something and yeah. risk your life with them. Uh, you know, not really risk your life, bond. but like work so hard. You know, a lot I of mean, those same people is what who I did the um, North Rim down okay. to Deer Creek Falls with, too. So Fun. I need to see pictures Canyon. of that. I do, too. I did the Havasu Pie Falls, and yeah. I still crave the food, actually, the Indian mm. fried bread. It's pretty good. So bomb. Yeah. Okay. Uh, my all-time favorite TV show is? Um, for lack of <laughs> The Office. I knew. Games. I don't know if that's true. Game of Thrones is up there. Okay. Just say what your heart yeah, says. Yeah, Go all fit. of them. Um, <laughs> I, there's just, I've watched a lot of you TV. You always do the office references. Yeah. 
and I've seen probably like two episodes. Sorry. Give this my best Jim Halford camera one. Do it. I already did. Oh, okay. Sorry. I, I missed it. <laughs> you did it again. <laughs> <laughs> okay. The biggest star to come out of Arizona the was. The biggest star to come out of oh, Austin Matthews. Celebrity. Yeah. Ooh, More hockey yes, puns. Hockey. But he's one of the greatest hockey players right now. Um, from Scottsdale, went number yeah. one overall in the NHL draft. Coming from Arizona, that's I think I interviewed him when he wild. was like fourteen. Really, that's pretty that's, cool. I'm old. Yeah, but I yeah. Mean, for him, that, that was only like six years ago. Not Maybe young. I don't know how old he is, but he's pretty young. Yeah. Um, I would consider Blank my hero. Uh, my brother. Wow. Yeah. So sweet. Co-founder he, Stephen Palando. Yes, he is. <laughs> we'll get more into that. Would yeah. he consider you his hero? Probably Be better. Possibly. I'm on the list. <laughs> I don't know how high. <laughs> My favorite State 48 shirt would be? All time. All timer. The mm. one you're wearing, do you want to give a peek? <laughs> we'll, we'll peek. We'll give a little peek. That's probably one of my favorites. You know? The color. Yeah, copper. The copper. Black and copper is pretty good. Um, all time, uh, I don't know, when, when we still sell, but now it's the Valley State of Mind, but the State of Mind one, mm -hmm. um, that one's good just because it is more illustrative, um, which is just kind of fun to work on. It's a little different. Um, that's the skull one. Um, yes. But, um, yeah, that was that was, that came out of that Grand Canyon hike from the North Rim. The that inspiration. Was not, yeah, inspiration from there, yeah. So you say skull. I say skull. Skull. Did what I say is it? skull? You said skull. Weird. I is don't it a know. Detroit thing? Skull? I don't know. You're don't an know. implant here. Well, yeah, I, I am, <laughs> but we've been here since I was three. Uh, so so basically, I, yeah. this is all I know. And I'm actually from Ohio. I'm not from Michigan like the rest of my family. Okay. I'm also left-handed. I'm just the absolute outcast. We have a lot to <laughs> yeah, go over yeah, yeah, in yeah. 30 <laughs> minutes. Okay. So, yeah. But what's important and why so many reasons why you're on the show, but a lot of people don't know that mm -hmm. you're actually the man, the myth, the legend behind mm -hmm. the state 48 logo. Yeah. The one that you love and wear all the time. Um, yeah, this is a logo. If we yeah. can edit <laughs> it's that. Right here. It's right here. <laughs> <laughs> Here's the logo. Uh, yeah. So give me that backstory. I've heard it from Mike, yeah, yeah. from several other people, but yeah. let's hear yeah, yours. So, so Stefan had told me, so at the point in time when I had heard that state 48 was started, state 48 was already a name. Mike and Stefan were going to do it together. Stefan had asked me if I wanted to help out with some design stuff. Mm -hmm. And at the time, I didn't really do design, any sort of graphic design. Um, went to film school after college. That was kind of my artistic outlet for a long time. Or I'm sorry, after high school. Um, that was my artistic outlet. Mm -hmm. And that's, um, but I was always the kid in, in class. I was drawing in my margins. You know, I wasn't paying attention. School wasn't for me. Mm -hmm. um, but, you know, but I like to draw. I never took any formal drawing or anything like that. Um, or even graphic design necessarily. Um, but he had just, he, you know, again, he's my hero, like I said, um, but, uh, <laughs> he had just asked me, he knew that I would be able to come up with something. So they said, Hey, we have this, this is the company. I was like, wow, this is a great idea. I really like this. He said, cool. Can you write out state 48 and just over the shape of Arizona? And that was like the only creative brief I had. Um, this is before I knew what a creative brief was too. So, mm. um, I was like, yeah. So I, you know, went an illustrator fumbled around quite a bit, um, Picked a couple different fonts, you know, it was more cheeky and stuff like that. Um, tried several of them. All of them were pretty bad. The only one, you know, this is what came out of it. And the only like, real idea I had with it is that I just wanted all of the letters to be touching each other. Mm. Right. And then that's ended up, that's what created the negative space. You know what I mean? Where like there aren't actually letters or our logo is technically made up of shapes, not letters. Right. Um, because it's the negative space that makes state 48. Also at the time, it was a way for us to now have a kind of like a two a two color design on a shirt because whatever the shirt color is that comes through, and then you have the logo color, so it makes a you know black and copper. So if you look at our website, you know, or you hear us reference it around the office, you know, black and copper, you know, black and red, whatever. Like it's typically based on those like just simple colors. Um, so yeah, those I think I gave. Five designs or four designs. That's I can't what I was remember ask. which. I think this was the fourth one. Yeah. Story I've heard, yeah. but it's like telephone now. <laughs> yeah, right. Someone yeah. was brushing their teeth, right? And they yes, said, yes. State 48. Uh, right, yeah. <laughs> yeah, and I mean, like I said, the other ones were really bad. Like they just weren't even really fully fleshed out. This is the only one that was fleshed out. And, you know, it's where they were like, okay, yeah, that's definitely it. Um, and do you have the original sketches? I do, yeah. A few years ago, we actually had posted like a flashback where I we had posted all that. of them. Mm -hmm. um, 
but uh but yeah i mean it was it was interesting too because like i said like now i look at it and like there's a bunch of things i would love to be able to change just because i actually have design knowledge now or at least i believe i do um but but there's also the beauty in the fact that like the unknowing has still lasted this long mm -hmm. and people don't want different things from it still yeah. which is crazy you know yeah like my artistic journey started with something and I may never do, I may never sell a product that has more sales than this one thing that mm -hmm. I created that I don't, didn't even know what I was doing necessarily. So that's amazing. Yeah. So and by I, I mean all of us, we right, all right. are a part of those sales. Right. Yeah. But it was your hand. Take ownership of this that. Clicking oh, the mouse. Left hand. You're lefty. Yeah. But I, so here's a, here's a complex I have in my head or at least used to. So on a computer, you know, Yes, growing up, yes, yes left-handed, mm -hmm. but growing up, mouse, the mouse is typically mm -hmm. on the right. So, like, I do a lot of creativity through the right hand in Illustrator and things. But yes, my free I hand whoa, is left hand. Oh, I wonder what that says about you. I mean, Some extensive this <laughs> one thing I've one thing I've learned is that being left-handed means that you're kind of right-handed because you're forced to be in society. Yes, yeah, so because so certain things are just that way, right? You should so just play baseball. Hmm. You should just play baseball. I'm not a baseball, baseball fan. Well. Should have done it. I told Gonzo to his face last week. <laughs> I felt really bad, but I, I had know. It. I, I was like, no. <laughs> not today, Nick. Not right now. <laughs> but, uh, but yeah, it's too slow a pace for me. That's why hockey. Hockey. You know, hockey's got that fast pace. Played lacrosse in high school. Makes so. sense. Yeah. So when was the time when you went from, okay, I'm just going to give them a sketch mm -hmm. and give them my artistic, you know, two cents, into, oh, I'm going to join this yeah. whole business plan and idea with my brother and Mike. Yeah. So, um, so when we, yeah, so like I said, initially seven, the idea was I was just going to help out with design here and there. Um, but then when we started, it, I, I was under the impression that we were, they were going to get the shirts and then they were going to kind of work on some like marketing campaign and stuff like that, that I had told like 10 people over the course of like six months or so. Mike had told every single person that he had come into contact with over that last year, I guess. Mm -hmm. Right. So it was like, and Networking. that's still, as you know, kind of mine and Mike's juxtaposition mm -hmm. on a regular basis. Um, but, but either way, so it was kind of hit the ground running scenario. And at the time there was a three and a half year age difference. They're three and a half years older than me. Mm -hmm. I grew up instant messenger. I grew up on Facebook in high school. I grew up on MySpace and things like that. That was oddly enough, just out of, like their realm of age gap. They didn't do mm -hmm. all those types of things. They weren't as relevant for being in school and stuff too. So, so I was pretty heavily addicted to Instagram, um, posting at least three times a day. Oh, I used whoa. to only have a car or um, a bicycle as transportation. Um, so while I would ride around town to and from work or whatever, um, I would just take pictures, minimalistic type pictures, buildings, architecture, things like that, that just really, um, intrigued me um and through instagram back then 2013 2012 that time um you know those are little artistic pockets were far more available and everyone spoke with one another and it mm -hmm. was just kind of different than what instagram is you know nowadays yeah. and just post a picture can we get back to that yeah that's which another episode just to post a picture just post a picture <laughs> yeah yeah exactly <laughs> so so i kind of understood hashtags and i understood all of those types of things and how to just kind of spread into all of those different pockets mm -hmm. right so we got those first shirts i took pictures in mike's backyard you know of like literally just the shirt logo only could hardly hardly see we had v-necks so you could kind of see the v-neck um if you scroll all the way back to the end of our instagram you'll see these like six pictures of our first colorways I'm and stuff that. yeah mm -hmm. and uh and i just posted it and said this is our black and yellow you know and um that's a that's a terrible first color too with yeah no with us juniors anyway um <laughs> any, yeah we don't talk about them here uh, anyway uh so but then it was just hashtag arizona hashtag scottsdale hashtag chandler hashtag all those arizona things right mm -hmm. to just try to push it out there um so then I, I ended up helping in this front too that i wasn't expecting on and then it was like the next front and then it was like probably like two and a half weeks in we had a meeting at uh pita jungle and chandler Love um it. and uh, yeah i ended up I was just like, hey, I'm helping out a lot more. I really like this. I think I can help out more. You know what I mean? Um, like, what do I got to do to buy in? And at the time, I think that it maybe because of inflation, the amount that we all paid has been bumped up to fifteen hundred. I remember it being twelve hundred mm -hmm. as a whole for the shirts. So I paid four hundred dollars to buy into State Forty Eight about two <laughs> weeks into the company. That's so, amazing. <laughs> yeah. uh, I have yet to make as good of an investment since. Um, yeah. no kidding. Yeah. <laughs> That's amazing. Just the just picturing you guys 
in the apartment or in the backyard taking mm-hmm. pictures, doing all that stuff. Yeah. So when you walk into this building now, mm-hmm. which obviously we can't give you like a tour here, but yeah. just full house mm-hmm. of people. Yeah, it's crazy. And you think back to those days, like what hits you the most, I guess? I, you know, honestly, I don't know because it was just a whole, just a rush of, it didn't, like I, I say it sometimes too, it feels like we're, we're coming up on 10 years. It feels like it's been right. 10 weeks, sometimes 10 months, like 50 years. Like it's, it's literally from day to day, it feels like a different amount of time. Like mm-hmm. it, it's all really just kind of flashed by. Um, but definitely getting into this space with more office space, this is the first time where I feel like, wow, like wow, like we really are doing something that is different. The fact yeah. that we're able to get here because it was, yeah, we started in a bedroom, then we worked in like a dining room area and then we worked in a different bedroom in a house that me and Stefan lived in. And then we, you know, um, you know, and then we got our first office space where we had one office and the three of us had to like share a desk for over two years, you know, and it was like, mm-hmm. talk about a bunch of animosity between three men in one <laughs> office space. You know what I mean? That was like, we all found a way to work together, obviously. Um, but there's just, you know, there's a lot that goes into that too, you know, mm-hmm. so wouldn't change any of it. I don't think any of us would, you know, we all know that we're not here without one another, just as like we continue to grow. We're not here without the addition of all the new people that we bring in too. You know, Mm -hmm. it's, it's literally, it's needed. You know what I mean? So, you know, yeah, I do a lot of, you know, I did this design now, but I don't do as much design. You know what I mean? Zach and Drea pump out a bunch of design for us and it's great content. A lot of it better than what I could probably do now. So Mm -hmm. it's just, it's cool. It's really cool. But you do wear a lot of hats and there's a trending reel going with your <laughs> face on it. Just pretty much explaining all that you do here. Yeah. It's more than obviously just a title, but can you kind of go through the list of like what your day to day? Sure. Or maybe sure. in a And week. just to be clear too, it's not just me that wears a lot of hats. No, Everybody absolutely. Does, you yes. Know? But, um, but yeah. Um, well, so the funny thing is like, usually you're behind the camera right now yeah. running the audio, making sure the lights are good yeah. with Nuvia. And now you're sitting uh, yeah. in this. This yeah, chair, yeah. So we so. have Dre from EIC. <laughs> Shouts out EIC. Shout out. Um, but uh, but yeah. So I mean, even things like this, right? Like getting this podcast room together and stuff like that. That's stuff that falls and, and happily falls on my shoulders. Like I enjoy doing stuff like that. You know, we made a joke. This is the third setup we've had in three yes. episodes, essentially. We're and, learning. Uh, yeah, and we're learning. But at the same time, like I enjoy that. You know, I have a background of messing around with electronics and stuff like that. And you know, so it, it all falls within something mm. that I feel comfortable doing. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, you know, I oversee, um, you know, all the collaborations that come in. I oversee what put what we put on our website as well. Um, you know, most video content, whether it is for social or whether it's just for something else, I kind of oversee those types of things. All things creative is really what I want to oversee. Mm-hmm. Um, but, you know, um, I live in Phoenix, so we have our Churchill location. So I kind of oversee that. We've had a little bit of a different, we change up of employees out there too. Now people that work here mm-hmm. help out there throughout the week. So it's kind of just making sure we're all on the same page you know um a lot more meetings than i've ever been a part of always in a meeting (laughs) learning how to deal with a lot of meetings on a regular basis but again you know i i understand that those types of things help you know talking to about like just mine and mike's different types of workflow or whatever you know that man's been in meetings for the last several years constantly and it's Mm -hmm. like all of them you know for a while it's like does he need to be in all these like it seems like he just wants to go to lunch you know but (laughs) but at the same time you know they've all been very beneficial and now that you know him and i have like a, a weekly meeting and it's like i like I look forward to that meeting because it really just resets everything for him and I to make sure that we're both on the same on page the and we can mm-hmm. kind of continue in the directions that we need to be working on for that week. Um, you know, and like, I, like I look forward to that. So now I, like I've learned from him that like, mm-hmm. yo, setting up the meeting and like making sure you have your notes like ready and dialed ahead of time mm-hmm. is it really does change it up and it just makes it a lot easier. So yeah. Sundays are typically my setup meeting days f- for the week. Wow. Yeah. So it is an interesting dynamic, though, you know, working with your brother, mm-hmm. a.k.a. your hero, Mike. <laughs> I mean, there's definitely a flow here that has worked. And yeah. what do you credit to that uh, other than obviously you talked about meetings and being intentional at that time, but just yeah. really creating that family feel, not only with the three yeah. of you guys and what you started, but now into this whole 
production here? Yeah, um, for me personally, what I like to always try to bring is just a level of um, authenticity, right? Like I think for me personally, that's really important to always be authentic, whether it is being a goofball, whether it is needing to be serious. Like I do believe that there is a fine line and I will admit I lay on the side of being a goofball and fun and like trying to make people laugh and stuff more often than anything. But I do believe that in, in doing that too, then when I do really need something from somebody, I could just have to ask them, you know, and mm-hmm. sometimes maybe it's not taken serious, but like I can get to a point where it's like, hey, I need you to do this for me. And like, typically it's it's uh, reciprocated pretty well too. Um, but yeah, I mean, I th- and I think that that's, that keeps everybody feeling comfortable and wanting to be able to do whatever they want and, you know, come in here. And if you come into our creative office, like I'm gonna ask you to, to shoot the basketball, whether you, this is your first time in our office or not. But before you leave, if you're just touring or whatever, I'm gonna be like, hey, you wanna take a shot? <laughs> you know what I mean? And holding up a basketball because they hear that and they're thinking not just a basketball, you know what I mean? On, on a little hoop or whatever, but you know, it's just creating that fun atmosphere continuously, I think is important. So you're definitely the creative of <laughs> State Free, one of the many creatives. Of, I, yeah. we, we're yeah. all creative we in our own way, but yeah. just seeing you in meetings, coming up with different designs, ideas, always outside the box, mm-hmm. always a little funky, but that's what we need. Yeah. I love it. What is your favorite part about creating for State 48? Um, I mean, it's just that it gives like people, it's crazy. People wear like our shirts to the store. Mm -hmm. you know what I mean so it's like that culture that's just been created that people that genuinely really want to wear us they wear us on planes they wear us to go traveling Mm -hmm. they make sure to take a picture in another city in it so that they can send it to us right so like at that point it doesn't even sometimes matter what the design is it's just that people feel that wholesome about it but I think within that that it, it is our duty to give them something really cool and to keep that fresh right so I don't remember the exact question that you just asked me <laughs> but <laughs> what is your this is why he's all over yeah yeah 100%, 100%. <laughs> what's just your favorite part of being yeah, able to create I, for State 48 again I think it's just to to be able to bring visual representation of things from Arizona right like mm-hmm. we live in a very special place right and I think a lot more people are starting to figure it out now Mm -hmm. but for a while that wasn't the case i think you made us cool i don't think we did it i think arizona did it but we've put an image to it sure (laughs) i'll I'll accept that right i'm way too humble a guy to just be like yeah we are (laughs) we are are arizona you know but we are state 48 Mm -hmm. you know um and i think it's cool i think it's you know one thing i say often too especially living in phoenix and working in that space sometimes is that like we are 48 of 50 we're very young, Mm -hmm. right, as a state. Like, that's really cool. Like, we have an opportunity to make history, and I I like to believe that State 48 is making a history, whether it is just through design or the partnerships that we have and the collaborations that we do. Like, it's becoming a point that, like, if you want to look like you, you know, are from Arizona, you're an Arizona brand, like, you work with State 48, and, like, that's that's pretty special. So when it comes to, like, you know, what do we like to work on and stuff, like, it's just, it's cool that, like, that's a continuous thing, you know? How do you keep just your creative juices, I guess, flowing day to day, they, week to week? Yeah, for, for me, I, I find it very important for me to draw things that are not company related, right? So, like, I will always be sketching, like, you can ask my girlfriend, we go to meals, and if I have a piece of receipt paper, or even, like, the that piece of paper that wraps up your silverware. You're I the always, guy that's like, can I have the kids menu so no, I can color? <laughs> I don't even need the kids menu. I'll make my own coloring book there, you know, it. but I always have a pen on me. You mm-hmm. know, that's something for me, and I'll, any scrap of paper will do, um, but just, you know, weird stuff. Like, that's what I like drawing now, you know, um, but again, it, for me, it keeps my mind fresh for when, now when I go to you know, work on some sort of state 48 design, I'm more intentional with it. Mm -hmm. Um, you know, but I do know that from doing years and years of collaborations and stuff, you know, you get a little bogged down. Like I know Zach and Drea kind of deal with that regularly because they are pumping out a lot. It's kind of difficult to continue to do very similar things, but Mm -hmm. have to keep it new and fresh. Um, so it is an area where I like to step in and, you know, be able to help out, lend an idea here or there, you know, sometimes they're like, Nick, that's, that's a lot of work you know i need to get this done today and i'm just like i understand (laughs) i understand but like and then i'll dial it back you know what i mean or i'll 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 pitch that idea but again they come up with great stuff without without that sometimes too but for them i do understand that it gets hard right forcing a logo into a logo when a logo is supposed to stand by itself Mm -hmm. isn't the easiest thing um but again it just it just shows how talented and creative that they continue to be too i asked mike this so i'll ask you what is it like when you are maybe in another state or city Mm -hmm. or 
just even at the grocery store, like you said, yeah. you see someone wearing yeah. your design. Yeah, sure. it's, I mean, it's still cool. It, yeah. It's, it is just a weird thing. You know, for me, it's always like, oh, which one is that? Like, I want to see, mm-hmm. you know, like, but at the same time, I've seen them all come through or across you, like, my know desk. You know, the shirt code, the pattern. <laughs> I mean, yeah, yeah, pretty much, right? So funny, the other night uh, at Oso for our birthday dinners, which you weren't at. Sorry, happy birthday. Thanks. Coming up. Anyway, um, <laughs> uh, there was a one uh, person wearing a State 48 shirt walked by us, and I asked Dre, like, what shirt was it? And she's like, I didn't know. I don't actually know what it was. And Mike's like, yeah, I didn't really see it e- either. And then he came back. I think he's probably from the bathroom or something. He walked back by, and, like, I did, like, a full-on, like. Check him out. I'm, like, <laughs> staring the shirt up and down. Like, what is it? And I think it was just an old like white transfer we used to use transfers and they wow. like kind of like peel and crack and start to oh, I have look some like crap you know i have um, some of I that i think it was one of those and i was just like because because like i didn't i didn't know what design it was other than that um so That's typically funny. and i know mike will often we didn't walk past that guy again but we'll if you have a cracked shirt <laughs> old one come to us we will replace it for free it's that like is lululemon yeah but state 48 we'll yeah. always replace yeah. <laughs> whatever you have uh, yeah exactly if we it's need almost to. like um we don't need to often though just no, so we're clear here we have so. a very low return rate <laughs> <laughs> for me it's almost like uh when i see people because i've seen them everywhere i've yeah. been out of town or and it's almost like we just high five each other like we just know yeah, it like, is, it's like a thing. It's like a, it's like a, it's like it's a like sport a, team or something. You're yeah, just like, seriously. We're part of the same yeah. the crew. There was a, I, saw, I saw a video recently. Um, I guess I think it was, it was like a pretty much like a viral video. Um, like this, these two people had raised a bunch of money for this kid to go play soccer somewhere or something. Oh, wow. mm-hmm. I don't know if you saw this. Mm-mm. But like at the end, like the guy that was recording the whole thing was actually wearing one of our ASU State 48 shirts. So like a bunch of people like tagged us in it and stuff too. That's it was just so like, dang, cool. this is cool. So I mean, it's like a really short clip, but it's just, it's again, it's one of those things where it's just like wow like it's Mm -hmm. it's made it this far or it's someone doing something awesome for somebody is wearing our shirt like that's obviously always great to see too you know um but yeah it is it's still cool to see you know um and some like it it doesn't matter who it is you know yeah so you're willing to wear it thank you thank you do you introduce yourself ever no but i used to every once in a while so i learned this lesson too i used to along with a pen and paper and other things that i always carry with me on a regular basis and see overalls um (laughs) but uh i used to carry stickers with me too so if i'd ever see somebody at a bar or restaurant or whatever i'd go and i'd give them a sticker and be like hey thank you so much for wearing that you Mm -hmm. know what i mean here's a free thing um that backfired a couple of times because if the person seems to be too intoxicated or even when they're not it's like now they it's like an open door and they feel that they can now talk to you for maybe longer than they need to or maybe approach your table a few more times too than they should time, yeah. yeah you know what i mean it's like hey man like i your besties with i you try now. to be a nice this is a nice gesture and i do mm-hmm. appreciate this but like this isn't like i'm now I, i'm at dinner you know what i mean yeah. like i don't really <laughs> like i'm so famous you're now. overstepping <laughs> you're overstepping a little bit thank you though okay so with i think we all know now you know through conversations, this podcast, what we've seen happen in the community. It's more than a t-shirt brand. Mm-hmm. It's more than a design now. Um, what would you say is now the direction beyond just the clothing that we do sell here? But mm-hmm. where's the direction going with your creative spin on it? It's too open-ended a question. I mean, you got to answer. I, yeah. ask a question. I, I don't know. <laughs> um, I mean, we, we, we um, you know, I think for us, is on the creative side right we try to continue to have creative freedom and fun and stuff like Mm -hmm. that so we try a lot of different stuff you know like more streetwear styles and things um you know that's fun and and honestly they haven't really caught on for our demographic necessarily Mm -hmm. um i think that they will you know i think that's just how things go you know things trend in and out obviously um but i mean again yeah we just want to continue to offer those same types of things, you know, we open it up to, you know, having this podcast and having cool and creative people on here. Um, but then, you know, we do art and branding and stuff like that to where we'll work on your logo. It doesn't even have to be state 48 stuff anymore. Mm -hmm. Um, you know, and now it's cool. You like what we do. Well, let us do it for you. And now you can walk out of here, you know, with a super awesome brand that you can kind of start and create something too. Um, but we do, you know, screen print embroidery. So it's kind of expanding on all those types of things, opening up more doors. You know, we have Gilbert opening up soon as well. You know, I think it'd be awesome to eventually have something up in Flagstaff, Mm -hmm. have something down in Tucson, you know, just kind of all of those different things um be great to work with like arizona parks if anyone has anything (laughs) uh you know we've sold at the grand canyon and stuff but if i could go back to the grand canyon for any reason at all 
anytime I would. So plan it. Yeah. What is the future? Would you say? That's a very big question. No one knows. What is the, <laughs> what is the future so, for State 48, would okay. you say? Because say, otherwise it's you started AI from... is going to take over. <laughs> uh, we're not even going to be needed for creating, you know, logo. No. <laughs> we're taking all our jobs. Uh, what is the future for State 48? It, let, mean, me, again, let me ask that better. Yeah. You started ground zero. Mm-hmm. Not, I wouldn't say from the bottom. Mm. Now we're here. Mm-hmm. But you've seen just this journey, this flow. And so yeah. what do you have your eyes set on? For the future of safety. Yeah, I mean, again, I think it's just kind of like, uh, just kind of maybe ensuring that staple, right? And and allow it to go into different avenues too, right? Like, I think we, you know, while we may have kind of Chandler, Gilbert areas and Scottsdale, you know, pretty wrapped up, but like Phoenix maybe doesn't love us as much as far as like that trendy side of things, you know? Mm-hmm. And it's not to say that they don't love us, right? But it's just like, I would say that there's certain people that won't wear State 48 too, right? And I think it's cool. How can we make something that even they will wear, right? Mm-hmm. To where like, you know, maybe some people over here won't wear, but they will wear, you know, and just kind of finding a way to hit them all. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like Arizona is a big place and we haven't touched it nearly as much as we may want to right i think solidifying like actual licenses with all four major sports teams would be super cool too you know what i mean we've had the diamondbacks you know um and we've worked with sons and coyotes but those aren't like official partnerships you know Mm -hmm. i think that that type of stuff is super cool too but you know there's just as we've learned especially through the collaboration side of things that like sky really is the limit because we'll work with anybody from a small business just starting or not just starting to you know a much larger organization corporation whatever it is you know Mm -hmm. like i know that i don't know i don't know that it's like an official thing but i know that we're going to like pitch some target ideas and stuff like that too to where it's just like that's huge you know what i mean but like I love Target. We made a joke the other day yeah. about like maybe we shouldn't go to dinner for my birthday. We should just invite all my friends to Target and have them all <laughs> buy me something. Like I'd be totally cool with that. I would definitely be there. Yeah. And now that Target has is. a Starbucks in Target, <laughs> it's just like yeah. My husband's trying to find me. That's yeah. where I'm at. <laughs> yeah. Probably refilling <laughs> my, my drink. Yes, absolutely. Yeah. So I mean, I, I don't know. I don't have an exact answer, right? But I think that there are there are a lot of possibilities. And as we've learned, you know, we didn't really we didn't plan where we got, how we got here, honestly. Mm -hmm. So like, as long as we can just keep, you know, adapting to what's going on and, you know, um, just flow with it, you know, I think that we'll be all right here as a company. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Flowing with it has been so much of just the, yeah. Flowing with it also known as, um, hanging on by the seat of your pants, (laughs) you know, whichever way (laughs) you need to look at it. it, Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. But what have you learned through that in Uh, this journey? So much. So much like, I I mean, it's just every single day is a learning lesson, you know, whether it is on how to talk to people, how Mm. to talk with clients or customers, how to deal with people. Right. Like I didn't come from a manager background. I was always go in what I believe now is called like silent quitting. I'm pretty sure I silent quit every single job up until you can't do that here. I can't. Uh -uh, uh -uh. (laughs) One day you just don't show up. I'm like, I'm I'm not running these cameras. (laughs) It's going to be a different Monday meeting if that's how I start (laughs) acting. Right. So, um, but, but yeah, and I think, uh, I don't remember what I was saying, but, um, yeah, you just have to, you have to continue to do it. Right. Like oh. I've learned so much. I, I didn't know how to, when I started with this logo, I didn't know how to work that program. Now I'm pretty good at that program. You mm-hmm. know what I mean? Um, and it's just been that way continuously for one thing or another, you know, um, I, I, for a long time was the person I was one of the guys in the back. You know what I mean? It was me and Stefan were the guys in the back, mm-hmm. you know, shipping out orders, making shirts, pressing shirts, you know, it's just has, you have to be able to continue to do that. You know, um, you know, I think as far as what I'm learning as of more, maybe more recently, um, you gotta be able to balance your life. You know, um, mm-hmm. I love state 48 and I love working here. Um, but, and I love working with everybody, but it isn't my only thing in life. Right. Um, and it's, hard to to maybe put the phone down stop texting Mm -hmm. don't reply to something right away even though it needs your attention um but those boundaries yeah yeah you need and you need to set boundaries too because mental health is a big part of it too and like it can be very very stressful at times right like all it takes is just like hey this five thousand shirt order came back and it's the art that's the problem and it's like cool (laughs) I guess I'll <laughs> figure this out right now, you know, but like, yeah. but it's a fun challenge. Like I mm-hmm. accept those challenges too. Right. Like, cool. What do we got to do? How do we have to make this right? What can we do? Mm-hmm. You know, um, that again, yeah, every day is a learning lesson. You can't You've grown up stop so learning. much. Can't stop this, learning. Haven't you? Yeah. 10 years. 
so ten years. St- yeah. Started so when? Can we give your age? Is yeah. That okay? So I was twenty four wow. when we started. So like, think about what you guys were doing at twenty four, and I don't know if it yeah. was this. Hopefully, it was. Maybe it's something even cooler. Maybe you started earlier. That'd be cool too. Right. <laughs> but uh, but yeah, I think back about that, and it's just like, huh, that's pretty young in comparison. Right. So and just change the trajectory of your life. Oh, so much. So many ways. Yeah, I didn't know what I, I, it's funny, I don't know what I would be doing. I have no idea. You'd probably. I was working in a machine shop for a little while. I worked at Dave & Buster's. Like, I have weird job (laughs) history, too. Like, I worked on arcades. They still don't know that you quit, so you're you're letting them know right now you quit. Yeah. (laughs) They're still waiting for your notice. Uh, Yeah, yeah, right? Uh, I worked on arcade games at Dave & Buster's. I worked in a machine shop. I worked construction in my life. You know what I mean? To end up here, it's just weird, right? Like, I, I, I did work in a small I worked for like a schooling company uh, where we shot and like recorded like educational videos. Okay. So that's funny because I didn't still didn't really learn anything there, but I was <laughs> making it. Um, but it was like high school. It was like a high school program type of thing. Um, it was fun. That was the last job I had before. That was what I quit before I went full time state. Well, you 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 you, you, you utilize mm-hmm. some of those skill sets here, uh, all obviously. Of them. All so of them, right? Dave so and like Buster's? back to the machine shop. <laughs> yeah, seriously, Dave and Buster. Like our press. Used Have to we break. collabed with Dave and Buster's yet? No. I'm okay with that. Oh. Uh, I don't know. I mean, either way. I can go either way. <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, Come on, like, we're supposed to get But, like, like our, our, uh, our heat press is broken, like, in the last year, right? We still use one for a few things, and, like, I have completely rewired that whole thing and it's like it's cool that i know that i have that like knowledge and confidence to do it um it's a weird skill set but like you know appliances and plugs and things like that circuit boards like those are not that difficult once you know what you're doing yeah Um, no not me but yeah and then like when i worked in the machine shop like that helped for because we manufactured things right so that helped with like setting up like how our back end works as far as fulfillment and stuff like that and like it changed over the years or whatever but like initially like mm-hmm. Mike and Stefan were worked in the hotel. They didn't know that like, oh, you do all of this and then you do all of this and then you do all of this. And this mm-hmm. is like the most productive way to do it, you know, but like I came in with some sort of knowledge in that aspect of things too. So look at you. And now you're a guest on a podcast. And now I'm a guest on a podcast. You're a star. Yeah. Can you tell them where they could listen to this podcast? Can you give the plug? YouTube. <laughs> State 48. Yeah. Probably Spotify. Now everyone's going to subscribe Apple with music. that. Yeah. <laughs> All the ways uh, that you can listen to podcasts. Uh, probably hit state48.com and there'll probably be a link at the top that says podcast or something like that. And, and we'll of course, yes, yeah, subscribe to our YouTube, YouTube channel. Subscribe to all of it. We'll be everywhere. Subscribe to Lisa. Subscribe to Dre back there. All of the subscribe. You can subscribe to me <laughs> at Nicolando. There we go. I was going to say, give yeah. us the plug. <laughs> yeah. Give us the plug. Well, thanks for being on the show. Yeah, thank you for fun. having me. We'll see you next week. Cool.